what is going on another video here uh, a little slow with uh, the business this week um, which isn't a bad thing I haven't had a day off in probably three weeks now um, weather's beautiful and I want to make a couple upgrades here so you guys just saw the video of adding some chlorine to the tank um, right here on this 25 gallon pump or I'm sorry this 25 gallon tank is a four gallon per minute uh, Delvin, Delvin uh, power flow, four gallon per minute pump. That's what came with this tank. I was using a um, North Star uh, uh, sprayer pump, five point five, five and a half gallon per minute pump. Um, I did have that on here actually. Um, a different one. It stopped working um, after maybe a week, week and a half of using it contacted the company that I got it from Northern Tool um, they've been great they shipped another one so these are uh, great pumps it's about 60 psi five and a half gallons per minute um, what we're gonna do here real quick is just disconnect this other pump here so they got these little when you get these they got these little plastic covers in here for where the inlets and outlets are we're going to take those out and then in a few minutes too <clears throat> when you get these pumps a lot of people don't know there's um a little allen key spot right here and this can allow you to adjust the flow um you can kind of let the pump run a little better they're usually not dialed all the way um into the sweet spot when you get them but again i don't know if you can see that it's not really Clear, but I mean, you can see this little silver thing right here. It's for a small Allen key. You can adjust that up for your flow. What you want to do is, I don't know why there's water coming out of here. There maybe before when they tested it, but there's water just flowing out. Interesting. Um, what was I saying? Oh, once you start flowing, you can kind of dial that in, and you want to hear where the pump is flowing steadily, not like. More of a and by adjusting that you can really uh, you can really kind of dial this in here. So before I go ahead and change this all up, I'm just put my toolbox here. So these pumps run off of a 12 volt battery. So in this toolbox, it's just a toolbox in the back of the truck. I have a 12 volt battery. These things typically come with clamps. So this plugs into power source plugs into the pump and there's usually a little toggle switch on and off and then a lot of guys hook it to a battery that's great i took this get something out of here show you i can't really pull it out all that far but there's a little toggle switch and this red and black wire and i disconnected it from the clamps and i spliced it into a, a longer section of this red and black cord and i run it down under my truck through the frame and to the battery. So when you use the, the 12 volts, just a, a battery that you keep in your truck, you have to remember to charge it, um, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, I did not have a charger when I first started. I was trying to cut costs. My dad had one at his house. So I went and dropped the batteries off, had them charged overnight. The next morning when we, on my way to a job, I forgot them. And I made it a half hour away from the house to uh, the work site and I didn't have batteries and luckily I had enough wire on the truck to run it to my battery and that is how I got the idea of just running the wire under the truck to the battery there's an inline fuse and um, when it's not plugged in and not running obviously you're not drawing power in between jobs to and from driving around to get gas whatever it may be the alternator charges the battery and you're good to go. I never have to worry about taking it into the house at night. I do carry the extra just in case. Um, but anyway, I plugged it in. Let's press the power button here. Okay, pump works and it's good. These pumps are actually okay to uh, to run dry uh, for, you know, you don't want to run and dry for hours. I don't know why you would do that. But now that we know that it works, let's disconnect this pump here. So these tabs come out. And it's got this little, there's probably chlorine in here, so I'm probably going to ruin my clothes doing this, but pull these 
back and this should yep, pop right out. I think that they're the same size. So this is just braided uh, half inch hose. Um, pretty good for flowing the chemical back and forth. This goes down and connects to my chem tank. It's spliced with valves. So one goes to that chem tank and one actually goes to this tank, chem tank. They both draw from the bottom and pump up into the pump. And on this side, get this pump out of here. This one, this side is always kind of a tricky pain. You gotta rotate it, I believe. Without breaking everything. And voila. So this pump is disconnected. This pump still works. This pump's good. It's just not as strong. The five and a half gallon per minute makes a pretty big difference when you're trying to flow some chem up to the peak of the roof or whatnot. I'm gonna have to email them and find out why there's water in this brand new pump. But again, they might just test it. So on this side, you can't really see. I have it uh, secured, so I can't really move it around too much. But the pump, the fluid comes in through this side, into this side of the pump pumps through and comes out this side and flows into this nozzle right here and then uh, it, then I can choose between whether it goes from um, one hose out to my hose reel or I have another hose here that I can easily transfer chem from that tank into this tank so right now we're just gonna hook this up and I'll, I'll show you that pops right in there and these should snap close there we go that's the sound we want I think boom and then where's our inlet Okay, there you have it. Now, I don't secure this to the tank, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I probably could put some screws in there, there are spots for it, but the hose line is connected to the tank. This I leave hanging freely, power. So let me disconnect this from here real quick and just show you what's going on. There's your pump, okay, pump. Um, so the inlet, from both of the tanks into the pump. Then I have this black hose right here, and valve on and off. This black hose runs to that hose reel. This green hose is just a feeder hose. It's uh, currently trapped under my ladder in the tank right now, but it's only about it's only about a couple feet long. It actually goes right down to there. So I take this cap off the end, put it into this tank. I can turn the pump on, I can turn off the hose reel and turn this one open. And then I can flow chem from that big tank into this tank and it makes it a lot easier, a lot faster. Um, but otherwise, I'm flowing the black hose to the reel. Um, under there's the box here, so again, let me get this pump out of the way. My extra battery just sits in here. This is that extra cord I was telling you about, and I just kind of spliced it. Spliced it into this wire. This wire runs down through the box, onto the truck, and just runs right up to the, the battery. And again, it charges it while I'm driving, which is nice and convenient. If you guys are getting ready to do this and you don't have a good respirator, get one. And I filled up all this cam earlier and I didn't put my respirator on because I was trying to make a video. Um, I really want to sound like this the whole time. Um, and now I'm lightheaded and probably poisoned by the fumes of straight chlorine. The respirator is great, especially when you're spraying up. Um, so anyway, again, I know I've showed you guys this in the past, but I'm here right now and we're doing this. so. 25 gallon tank with a valve, open it up, 
connected to the pump here. It's spliced in all here at that T. You see it? There's a T right there. And then the other part is connected into there to the chem tank with the valve. And then that right here is very convenient. Right there. And take that cap off, close the valves to each tank, hook up a a female female. So that's a male right there. Female, female, and put in a male, just a fresh garden hose right there. And then you can you can keep the pump off. You don't have to run the pump at all, but you can just the pressure from the hose will go in through your pump, clean out your pump, clean out your hose, clean out your hose reel. You can run it through your nozzles at the end of the day, and it'll just you know it helps stuff last longer. Um, so in one of the previous videos, I wrote uh, or talked to you guys about this morning was uh, let's see this addition to the gear I know I'm really good at uh, making professional videos but that's not really what we're all about here we're just learning and teaching as we go the wand so it's not really designed to go on this this is going to be replaced we got 200 feet of half inch soft wash PVC hose coming this is heavy, it's a pain in the uh, butt. It's about to swear, but I don't know what YouTube does about that. So, um, a lot of garden hose. We're gonna, we're, we're getting rid of it. I don't like it. Um, I had like 150 feet, actually I had two sections of 150 feet of this um, Flexzilla hose. Um, it's a nice hose, light hose, but after a week or two of flowing chem, it just, it wasn't good. It was bubbling, it was falling apart. This stuff, it's heavy. It's a contractor hose. It's definitely lasting longer, but it's just not what you want. It's not what I want. It's not what you need. And I want to get the half inch hose, be able to connect it to my wand. And I'm excited to see how that works. I haven't put the uh, turn that off. I haven't put the um, the blue monster. I showed this in the video earlier. I was sitting in the sun as I did it. I don't know if you guys could see it. The blue monster. Um, the blue monster. It's better than using a seal tape, plumbing seal tape with this stuff. The chem will eat that stuff up. I used it. It doesn't hold together. It's actually gone off of everything that I put it on. Um, can't really see that, but I mean, that was at one point fully wrapped. I mean, like a week ago, and it's gone. Um, the chem destroys everything. This blue seal stuff is chemical resistant, or blue seal, whatever it is. Blue monster is chemical resistance, and... Someone else that uses this that recommended it to me actually says that if it if you put it on your wand and then you start to see uh, a bright yellow or bright green color, that's actually the chem um, reacting with that stuff. So it'll it'll tell you on the it, basically if you see it on the outside of your wand here in some of these sections turning yellow, you know that you have a leak in your seal because this should all be blue when you put it on. And then if it starts reacting with the chem and you see it on the outside of your wand here, you got to tighten something up or, or revisit revisit your build. Um, so it's it's kind of good. It'll, it'll kind of show you when you when you start to get leaks. Um, so I haven't used it yet. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but that's, uh, that's probably about it for right now. Uh, just an update for anyone who's really following along. This will be the end of week four, and we are up about $11,000 in four weeks. Um, and most of that, about six or $7,000, has come from May alone. We started right in the end of April, I think on the 22nd. Um, and today is the 19th. So in 19 days, we've done about $7,000 worth of work this month. All from right here. All from the bed of this truck, just me, a couple ladders, hoses, and some cheap chem. A couple hundred bucks for the chem, and that'll make us three or four grand. So, follow along, subscribe, like, see you next time.